Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ, the living God. Welcome to Jesus God Incarnate Ministries, where I give you all things Jesus. So if you are led of the spirit, like, subscribe, share, hit the notification bell so you know every time I release a video. Also, I have an email in the about section. Let me hear your thoughts and comments below. And if you are led of the spirit, donate to this ministry. Products I've made or cash donations below. Okay, so this one's actually one of those things that people typically think about money first, right? Greed. Oh, somebody's greedy. Uh, you know, um, it's like, like, uh, so they're not going to help me financially, right? Well, what if you're greedy with your knowledge of God? What if you're greedy with your patience? What if you're greedy with, uh, pretty much take that idea into the rest of whatever God has given you? What if you're greedy with uh, sharing the gospel? Like, you, you will only share the gospel to certain people. Isn't that the same thing as greed when you come to, uh, when you are, you have money. Let's say you have, uh, I know, hundreds of dollars, thousands, hundreds of thousands, or millions. And you're only going to share a piece of whatever you have, right? Whatever you've been blessed with, whatever you worked for, all that stuff. To only select few people. That's greedy, right? Because God says it's better to give than to receive right so and this i guess like i'm gonna have to tie in tithing and blessing uh the workers of god and blessing uh the poor and and blessing i guess like the sick blessing um like w whatever it is that as i say as the spirit leads but the principle is still the same that you and I, as children of God, born again, indwelled by the Holy Spirit. I always have to add that part because people think that they're believers just because they confess and believe. You are, but you need to, God has to approve it by giving you the Holy Spirit or else it's just, it's just a, a, a false equivocation. I was in heaven, uh, like I said, a few weeks ago. And yesterday, I was in, a, um, two days ago, I was in a conference, church conference. And, um... And then God revealed to me, like, like when I was in the throne room of God, I basically realized <laughs> God is really actually, he's actually holy. That's his, that's his state of being, being holy and pure. And then I look at us on earth. That's why when I went there, uh, I had lit verbatim the same reaction as as Isaiah. My eyes have seen the Lord of glory. Like I was literally like, no, whoa, whoa. Right. Literally. I was like, yo, no, no, literally. Right. Cause I'm just like, he's holy, <laughs> but we're not. So then it, it, it made me realize none of us could make, a <laughs> none of us will be able to make it on our own I don't care what you do, what you say, how sincere you are, how many tears you've cried, how many uh, hours you put into whatever ministry it is, how involved you are in your church, how much Bible knowledge you... Hey, bro, when you stand before the Lord of glory, you're going to realize why Jesus actually... God himself had to bring us to his standard. And, and and this is this is why I'm attaching greed to everything. Like I said, if you if money is the first thing that's coming to your mind, I'm gonna lovingly and kindly and maybe a little humorously say you have to stop thinking so one dimensionally about the things that has been given to you. What besides finances has been given to you? Are you greedy with your time? And greed, I'm using it in an evil context, not like, you know, because sometimes there's there's a good context in greed in terms of like sometimes. OK, so if you are a husband with a wife and children and a job or whatever, a business to run or whatever it is that you're doing or whatever responsibilities and you understand that, OK, you raising your kids in the proper way, you uh, uh, preparing your wife to go see God. Right. Because that's the 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 whole Pretty much one, I should say it like this, one of the jobs, one of the main jobs of the husband is to prepare his wife 
to go see God because Jesus submits to God. I as a husband, not a husband now, but I as a husband submit to Jesus and then the wife submits to me, right? The children submit to the parents, all that stuff, right? So this is the, this is the, the, the line that it goes, right? Now in that context, you have to be greedy with your time. I don't have time to go hang out with friends and this and this and this all the time. Of course, there's a place and a time for everything, just like it says in Ecclesiastes 3, that there's a time and a place for everything, right? Time to reap, time to sow, time for this, time for this, time for that. Of course, there's a time for it. But my main priority is now not, yo, how can I kick it with the homies every single uh, every single weekend and this, this, and this? No, 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 no. Y'all going to see me maybe once or twice a month, maybe, Right? Like this is given if, if I got kids, children, and all that stuff, because it's God first. I don't care what it is, what you got going on. If you have 10 kids, if you have 30 grand, I do not care. It's God first. If you're within your immediate family, God first. God over everything. The second thing is your family. If, be, be, okay, so it, it goes like this, and, and this, this is, this is going to tie back to, into being greedy with your time, right? If you are not married yet, whatever your immediate family is, whether it be your mom, dad, uncle, or whoever is in that vicinity that's taking care of you, grandma, I don't care who it is, whatever it is, that's your immediate family, as is written in Timothy. I think it was, uh, might be First Timothy. It says, um, it says that, Take care of your family, especially your immediate family, or else you're worse off than a non-believer. That's how important God sees family to, to, he calls us what? The children of God. You can't be a child unless you have a family and you have a father and all that stuff, right? So like God takes family really, 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 really seriously. That's the number two thing on the list as a human being after being dwelled with the Holy Spirit. God first, family second. You should be greedy with your time. Is your work getting in the way of you raising your kids in the way that they should go so that when they get older, they do not depart? Children are a gift from God, right? So once you get married and you don't have no kids yet, but you have your spouse, that becomes your priority. Your mom, your dad, your brothers and sisters, they're not your immediate family anymore. Your wife or your husband is your immediate family. That's who you prioritize. Your mom says, oh, da, 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 da. but then your husband or your wife, you guys are going through something where it would be ideal for you guys to fix that rather than helping your mom or your dad or whoever it is. Bro, they're not your immediate family anymore. As, it's, as it is written, take care of your family, especially your immediate family. As soon as you have your wife or your husband and then you have your kids, your immediate family just expanded. That's it. But your wife is your main priority and you have to be greedy with your time. A man should not be talking to other women or whatever it is. Now you have to be greedy with your time. You have to prioritize your wife's needs over your mom's needs, over this person's needs. Obviously, use wisdom, knowledge, discernment, and understanding and be led of the spirit when it comes to um, when it comes to like doing all these things, right? But it's 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 like the the people of God are <laughs> I mean, obviously they're their priority, right? It's just you're going to neglect your own family for the people of God? Bro, I'm not doing that, bro. Let's say in the future, once I get there, people start calling me for this and this and this and this and this. Bro, I have a date with my wife, bro. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not I'm not kicking it with you guys. Oh, you guys are going out the country? That's cool. Go ahead. I'm, I'm kicking at the crib with with my boot tank, right? Cool. So 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 now now in, in a context of if you're, if you're single and you're trying to build a, a, a life for your family... Let's say as a man, right? As okay, myself as an entrepreneur, I'm going to be greedy with my time. Who I hit up, who I call, who I this, who I text, who I, it, it, for me, I have a lot of missed calls and a lot of messages that I do not return purposely because I, I'm trying to build a future for my family. I'm trying to build a future for the people of God, right? I'm trying to build a future for them. Like, it's cool that, you know, all these things, I'm going to miss moments, I'm going to do this, I'm going to, that's fine, bro. But, but when it comes to, um, like, I'd rather focus on what God has given me 
and miss out on laughing moments. We, I can have laughing moments with a lot of people. That's cool, right? So now I have to be greedy with who I text. Now I have to be greedy with, with who I call back. Now I have to be greedy with, um, with my time, right? It makes sense. So, and, and now expanding to the other stuff, some people are greedy with like their love. Like, why are you not loving people like Jesus loved people? Why are you greedy with your compassion? Why are you greedy with your prayers? Why are you greedy with, and, and obviously this is like just another thing you could put in your arsenal in the things of God. It, it's not like an overbearing thing in terms of um, like, oh, I have to pray for everyone. To, nah, be selective. Like I always say, use knowledge, wisdom, discernment, right? And, and understanding. Because just as he says, his burden is easy and his yoke is, his burden is light and his yoke is easy. It shouldn't be grievous. If it's grievous, something has to change in terms of you have to get free, delivered, healed, or something from whatever it is that, you know, it shouldn't be a grievous task. Now, if it's religion and tradition and man-made whatever, then it's going to get grievous. That's how you know that if you are getting weary in the things of God, there's something of man or something of yourself or something of the devil that's messing with it. Jesus says it's, it's his burden is light and his yoke is easy. I don't, why are you stressed out? You shouldn't be. Of course, stress, earth, da, 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 da. But I'm saying within the things of God, I have peace when I'm doing certain things. Obviously, there's those moments like, you know, if I'm like pronouncing judgment or I'm preaching or something, like the heart of God weighs heavy on, on a man of God or a woman of God with a great calling, right? All the great uh, characters in the Bible, they all went through a, a period of like depression, anxiety, suicidal thoughts or whatever it is, right? Just just go back and look at the prophets, right? They were grieved because of the task that God has given them and they're grieved because some people won't listen. That's what grieves me. It's not that I'm preaching it. That stuff's easy, cool, whatever. It's, it's that some people won't listen and it's to their own, it's to their own demise, right? So, so it, it, it kind of comes down to, are you greedy with your obedience with God? Are you, ah, I won't, ah, I won't. You know that you should be reading your Bible, right? You know that you should be praying sometimes. <laughs> you know you should make time for him. You notice, <laughs> that's not something to be, like, I, I don't know why preachers are on the stage saying these things, but I do know because we're in such a time where they have to, to say it right they have to say it they have to say <laughs> you're on your phone five six hours a day you're on netflix three four five hours a day you couldn't pick up your bible for one of those hours you couldn't pray for one of those hours now you're being greedy with what you're giving god is anybody hurt or cut right now this is the reality we live in. This is the truth of the matter of the times that we're in right now. Like it, 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 it literally is what it is. <laughs> People would rather, they would rather um, spend time on a phone game, spend time, I don't know, doing what, keeping themselves busy. They'd rather spend time uh, getting into a devotional for two or three minutes. They'll make up every excuse in the book to say, I don't have time to get closer with God. Church, we have to start being greedy with our time. Give time to God. That's, that's all I'm saying, right? Give him time. Your future self won't regret it. Really, it just comes down to that, right? I ain't gonna harp on it. You can watch whatever sermons, get convicted in whatever way. Just know that you won't regret it. <laughs> you won't. So so like with finances, right? There's a lot of people, and this ties into the greed of you not spending time with God. There's, there's a lot of people that, um, they will... They will listen to respond rather than like I've, I like I said, I've had comments that I would I would have to restrain myself in trying to rebuke too harshly because it's like 
I don't think you listen to the full video or if you listen to the full video, you were very selective on what you wanted to hear rather than actually hearing it for what it is of what I'm saying. I'm very meticulous in, that's why half my videos are like 30 to 40 minutes long or longer because I'm trying to flesh out everything. So I don't, so you can hold me accountable for what I say. Like I said, if you don't believe what I'm saying, go to the Holy Spirit, seek God, seek wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and all that stuff, right? And, and discernment. And then use it properly. It's just because of our time spent elsewhere and not in the things of God, people will will criticize men of God or women of God, right? Which is fine. I don't I don't mind, right? Um it's more of uh it's more of like God um people will be quick to judge in like when okay so the the principle of tithing into a ministry or into your church is not about the church is going to take my money and they're going to go make, get rich with it. That that's not even the point. It's 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 the if you look in the Old Testament, the tithe was the right of the workers of God, right? Because that's all that they did. Literally, this is all that I'm doing, and I'm not going to go work a regular job. I'm not going to do it this, and I'm not going to do it that. Those were the workers of God, like the Levites and all this stuff. It was their right to actually get that. And it was the obligation of the church and the body of Christ and, and, and the body of God, Israel and all that stuff to give a portion of what they get. Not out of the fact that these people will eat and da 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 da. It's the fact that that you are obedient to what God said. God said so into the people that are doing my work. That's the point of giving. Has it so that more people can go get saved if you tithe into this ministry, right? Now, in my understanding, right? And like I said, always go cross-reference what I say. Don't believe anything that I say. Go check it out in the Bible and this and this. Go get your books, right? In, in, in what I understand from what God has revealed in the scriptures. And just using, you know... Um, First, it's always led of the spirit. And then it's the wisdom, knowledge, understanding and all that stuff, right? If you're led of the spirit, that's why I changed my phrase from if you're blessed with this ministry, consider donating to I don't even want I don't care if you're blessed. Well, I do care if you're blessed, right? But it's it, that's not even the main point of, of, of what, why I changed. I changed it because I will only receive donations from the for, for this ministry if the Holy Spirit says, just as Abraham, I don't want a single dime. I don't care about that. I don't. It goes down to, uh, am I going to see you again? Am I? I want to. I really, 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 really do want to see you again. I really do. From the bottom of my spirit, God wants to see you more than I want to see you again. Right? So that's why since I switched the phrase, I've had one donation. Just one. That tells me that the Holy Spirit does not want y'all for some reason. I don't mind. I don't I don't I don't care, right? To bless this ministry. That's cool. The thing is that when you donate to a ministry, use knowledge, wisdom, discernment, understanding, and all that stuff, right? And donate to your main church, the main body that's feeding you. If that's me, that's fine. If that's a YouTuber, that's fine. If it's a local actual church, that's fine. But the Bible, as it is written, do not forsake the assembly of the saints. Yes, have your private time with God 
have your Bible studies with your homies or whoever it is. Uh, go to the groups, go to the this, go to the this, but do not forsake the assembly of the saints. We're supposed to go to church. Don't get caught up in what day. I literally don't care if your church is on Wednesday, Saturday, Sunday, whatever day it is, just do not forsake the assembly. Something very special happens when, when the people of God meet in person and the Holy Spirit inside of me and the Holy Spirit inside of you and the atmosphere of prayer and worship and this, the message that this, don't worry about the fact, that, oh, well, it's, it's in the structure in this. Ah, I don't, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. there are structures that man has come up with, but God, he still blesses that structure, right? Oh, well, why, why is it that, don't worry about why the, 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 there, there's a 30 minute, uh, uh, there's there's like 30 minutes of worship and then announcements and then and then the preacher comes up and then and then there's a call to the altar that's the structure cool the real question is is the holy spirit moving are you being added on to every single time are you going back home and watching that sermon two or three times that week are you watching sermons and reading the bible and worshiping outside of that building or outside of that house or whatever it is right but just don't don't forsake that the thing is, people don't recognize when the Holy Spirit's not there because they haven't actually diligently read outside of the church what the Bible says. They haven't pressed into God. They haven't done that. I can recognize if the Holy Spirit is in a is 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 in a uh, a church or not. I I just found one. I've been looking. This is the church that I've been looking for for years, but I just never found it. I grew up Lutheran. Went to Seventh Day Adventist for a few years. I've been to multiple different churches. Right. And and this is the one church where I almost looked at God's side. I was like, bro, this church has been down the street from my house for this many years. And I never knew about it. But it's it's in time. It's, it's in God's timing. It's in God's timing. Right. So now. As it says, God loves a cheerful giver, as it is written, it's better to give than to receive as it is written. That Paul was like, I'm working and laboring and I don't have time to go and work and make the hourly wage and this stuff, other stuff, right? So, some, he, but he, he would also have like his tent business, right? He was, he was like a contractor, I guess, if you want to say it like that. He'll make tents for people, da -da -da -da, get an exchange and this, this and this, cool, whatever, right? So he would do that so, so, that, so that he wouldn't, um, he wouldn't uh be able to like th that he's not relying on the church all the time that's why i became an entrepreneur i literally had the thought <clears throat> i'm going to learn how to invest so that if i ever become a pastor or this or this or, or whatever it is that the church doesn't have to take care of me like no i'll volunteer being a pastor i'm not even on the payroll or whatever it is but i will be whatever role that you need me to be right that's that was the same mindset as paul but there was a period of time where paul was like no, 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 no. Take care of me. He literally told him, no, take care of me because I'm laboring doing this gospel stuff. Not knowing if I'm going to whatever, right? Wherever the Holy Spirit leads. He said, I'm laboring just as it was the right of the, of the Levites to, to get the, the portion of, of, of the money specifically for them. That was their gift, the tithe, right? Paul was like, you guys, you guys have to take care of me. <laughs> You see me laboring day and night, preaching the gospel. He was preaching till the sun would come up. Would come up. He would preach with many tears in his eyes, as is, as it is written. You know, many tears in his eyes as he's like pouring his soul out to them. Yo, I seen the Lord. This is what he's telling me. This and this and this and this and this. Right. So it's like that. That that's why I say. Your church should be number one, right? The question is, what is your church? Where are you getting fed the most? Take care of that body. Take care of that body. Give them your tithe, 10%. If God leads you to give more, cool, whatever, that's fine. But God says 10%. Like I said, not because of... God already owns everything. It's not your money. It's not your soul. It's not your spirit. It's not your clothes. It's not your house. It's not your eyesight. It's not your phone. It's not your apartment whatever it is it's not your car it's not it's god's where do you see a signature on the edge of a sunset 
Where do you see the signature on the edge of a star? You see that on on, on a canvas where somebody wrote it on. You you see it on, on programs. You see it in in movies. You, you see the logo of who made it. You, you see the, the legal documents of who this legally belongs to. But you don't see that for your for your human body. You don't see that for your mind. You don't see that for your spirit or your soul. You don't. You don't see it for your words. Right? Because God owns it already. You think it's your money? You think it's your job? If God didn't create you to exist, would you even have anything to work with? Right? So what I'm saying is that it is the right of the workers of God to be taken care of by the church. But as the Holy Spirit leads. Right? If you're going to a church, it's your it's it's their right for you to give a portion, just 10 percent. Unless God leads you to, to, to more than that. To give to the church so they can go bless certain pe people and things because they connect with other people, organizations, missionaries, this, 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 to go get more souls saved, right? Obviously, if you have knowledge, wisdom, discernment, and understanding, and you know that it's a corrupt church, like mega churches, just get money, da, 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 all that stuff, that's where you shouldn't even be at that church, bro. Don't watch their videos. Don't pop up at their services unless you're there to rebuke people, right? Or, or as the Holy Spirit leads, right? Maybe you might be the light in that church. I don't know, right? My cousin was 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 the light at um at a mega church. He was the light there. He 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 put them on so much stuff that they they still to this day won't acknowledge it openly. Why are you afraid to acknowledge that he single handedly changed the entire structure of the church, basically? Of how people worship this and this and this and this and this. Stealing his ideas, not giving no credit. You know, the ideas that he came up with that God was telling him, he shared it openly. They, they just stabbed him in the heart. It's crazy, right? So it's like, sometimes it's like that. But what I'm saying, right, that people are, finances is the first thing that comes to people's minds. Think about other things too. Time, this, 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 right? All I'm saying, that's all I'm saying, man. That's all I'm saying, dog. Come on, man. Come on, dog. Right? Um, it's it's one of those things, right? That uh, God, He really, He really wants you to, um, I guess, live carefree, just as Jesus says. Like, why are you worried? <laughs> God knows, you know. God knows. That you need these things. We're reading Matthew 6 and 7 right now. He knows that you need these. Well, Matthew 6 specifically. He knows that you need clothes, money, food, house, shelter, this. He knows. God's not ignorant. <laughs> Our dad ain't dumb, yo. <laughs> the Holy Spirit ain't stupid, yo. <laughs> Jesus ain't no goof off the street, bruh. Right? It's like, he really, he already knows. The, the the point of that, right, is to believe fully that God is going to take care of you. Simply put, he loves you. Why would he want you to be struggling? Why would he put scripture, like, as it is written in Psalms, I think it is, that I've never seen the righteous forsaken begging for bread. Like, just think about, think of that, the fact that all the scriptures God breathed, as it says in 2 Timothy 3.16. And then God talks about, in the New Testament, when he was on earth, he says, there was three, three, ta three groups of people, well, like, tech, sure, whatever, right? One, the, the talent thing, right? I've talked about it qu quite a bit on this channel. One buried it because he was lazy and wicked and goofy. He was not wise. Da, 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 da. Even though they all knew the master. One was given two. He doubled it. The other given five. He doubled it. And then the other that were given, uh, th then the others that were given the two and the four, they were given more after that. They have to invest. There's no other choice. You literally cannot double your money in that period of time because he told the lazy and wicked one, you could have at least put it in the bank for interest. You could have at least did that. At least, at the least, you could have did that. So these guys, 
they they invested, period. Like, right? So and then Ecclesiastes, uh, I think it was Ecclesiastes 2 or Ecclesiastes 11. I think it's Ecclesiastes 11. Anyways, it's 2 or 11. Just, just read the first like 12 verses, whatever, right? So Ecclesiastes tell us, make seven or eight streams of income, right? The same Solomon that's, that's, that's led of the spirit, moved by the spirit to write this stuff. The same Solomon said in Proverbs that the, the, the treasures of the wicked are laid up for the righteous. Because in Revelation, it talks about how uh, people are getting money in a dishonest way. They're getting it through evil means. They're being greedy, right? They're, they're not upholding the justice of God. The justice of God is that he takes care of the poor. He takes care of the widow. He takes care of those who are in prison. He takes care of those that can't help themselves because they have a hard life. Somebody that's blind has a hard life. Somebody that's lame has a hard life. Somebody that doesn't have the money to get a surgery that they could get for free in other countries, they have a hard life. This is why we give the money to the church. This is why you give uh, money to ministers like myself or whoever on YouTube or whatever, whoever you're blessed by. That's why you do it. Because we have the wisdom and knowledge of God. So we teach the wisdom and knowledge of God. And then we multiply whatever is given to us. And then it goes out to, so I can donate to ministries that are doing those things. You got foundations. You have foundations that bless children that can't eat, bro. They will literally sacrifice their lives and dedicate their... They will move across to whatever country it is. I don't care what country you're in. They're going to move to a whole other country just so they can feed kids for 40 years. You don't think those kids have a hard life? Like, bruh, I've been hungry before. I've been homeless. Like, I didn't know where my next meal was coming sometimes. And I live in America. Like, I literally didn't know if I was going to eat for the next couple days. And then there's people that come out of nowhere and then they just give me a couple bucks. I didn't ask for it. They see that I'm a kid, though. I'm 19, homeless, this, 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 right? And then, and then, and then now, now, now I think to those missionaries that are across the world that are putting their lives on the line so they could feed some kids that are eating dirt in Haiti because they, 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 the, like, what can they literally do? Church, what can they do? There hasn't been rain for X amount of time. There's no good uh, farm. There's no good farmland. They don't have a bike to to walk to the city. Their, their dad died or whatever it is. What can they do? This is the message. This is the heart of God. This is the justice of God. The main priority is the gospel. And then the gospel brings out the character of God. The justice of God isn't totally just, oh, I'm going to, you know, this person did something bad. And now this person that was the victim, they're going to they're going to see this person get punished. If you read in the Old Testament, in the Psalms, I think it was I forgot which Psalms it was. The dude that was anointed broke this down. I was like just trying to hold back tears and I started crying eventually. But um, it's like the justice of God is that th they get fed. The justice of God is that blind, physical, blind eyes see. The justice of God, because that's their right. It's not only that this person did something bad, so they must get punished for it rightly. It's also that these people literally can't help themselves. Give to the church, give to the ministries that can go and help them. Give to the ministers that have the power and the anointing so that they can go and anoint the churches and add on to them so that they can get the knowledge and the wisdom. They can get the activation. They can travel around the world so that you are able to, um, so you're able 
to see more and more uh, prayers get answered. So then, so that these the, the 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 church gets out of the religion, they get out of they get out of the man tradition, they get out of these the, the mindset of oh I have to you know uh, do this and this and this and this. No. No. We follow the scriptures, but we really follow the scriptures. If God says put something down and do this, put that thing down and do this. What is it that you're holding on to? Are you holding on to something? Are, like like you, your heart, you're being greedy towards God with your heart. You're being greedy towards God with what he's asking you to give him. What's bad about God trying to heal you? What's bad about like, like, okay, so that's, that's the part where for me specifically, like when, when I'm in person, like, it's not that I'm intimidating in terms of like, I'm mean or this, 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 I just have a really big anointing. And like, sometimes it's annoying to me low key because I'm like, I'm literally scaring people off. But Jesus did say he came to bring not peace, but a sword to divide those. Some people don't recognize that I'm a man of God. They don't. That's fine. Even in the church. I don't care. Right. They don't recognize that everything I'm saying, though my life looks like a, a roller coaster, is going to happen. <laughs> God showed me everything that's about to happen in my life. Like, I'm good, bro. <laughs> I'm good. Right. It's just um, like people... When when you reach a certain point in God, because there's calipers to it, when you reach a certain level of holiness and this and this and this and this, you recognize who's behind you via faith. You're like, hmm, this person loves God. This person cares about God, but they're stuck in a religion within God. Because it just, you just reach an, a higher ceiling of religion. Let's say you go from level one to level 20. Level 20 creatures or whatever it is that you're playing a game on. They're, they just, the monsters just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Ideally, your weapons or whatever you're using, your tactics, your, your moves should get more and more powerful so that you are able to face those things. It might be a little difficulty until you figure out what to do, but ideally it should be. Your prayer life should get better and better. You should be getting holier and holier. People say nobody should do anything. I disagree. Yes, you should do some things or else you're gonna get, <laughs> you're gonna reap what you sow. <laughs> so it's like, are you led of the spirit to give to whatever ministry? Okay. Are you led of the spirit to give your time to a ministry? Are you led of the spirit to plug into a church fully? Are you led of the spirit to uh, go preach? This is the craziest part. Put your fear down in terms of, as an entrepreneur, I learned something. I learned, um, I'm human. And I do, I make decisions that are risky to the average minded person. I still have fear. What if this investment does not work? Try it again. If you look at a basketball player or a soccer player or a pro professional player, whatever it is, if they make a shot or they try a goal, if their fear grips them so much that, oh, what if I don't make this? Try again, right? This the, and and this is why I, I shoo off a lot of people, even in the church. I shoot off a lot of women, as I said before, because of just the, <laughs> and that's the part where I'm I I have I just not even gonna talk about it. There's a lot that we can be more generous on. If you're having trouble being generous on certain things and it's grievous for you to be generous on it, there's something that you got to cleanse in your walk with God.
It's not supposed to be grievous. It's not. It's not. You're supposed to have so much joy and peace that it's actually annoying to certain people. That it's actually going to offend somebody else. That it that it's going to be overwhelming for the believers and the disbelievers. How do you got how, how do you do that? Whether they pray in their heart, whether they say it literally, whether they think it, whether they act it in front of you. I got people watching. I'm just like, it, 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 it is what it is. Like I'm, like, I'm not going to conform to anybody or anything, right? There's good structures out there for whatever it is, right? There's good structures for this and this and this and this and this. I just don't conform to any of it because... I'm not going to put myself in a box. My my thoughts have been expanded too much for me to come back to like a certain vicinity. Cool. The question comes down to, are you going to be greedy with your time to grow your knowledge in God? Being ignorant of Satan's devices will bite you in the butt later. Not growing in the knowledge of, of, of the, uh, the knowledge and grace of Jesus Christ, our Lord, is going to bite you in the butt later. Use wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And know that it's, take it easy. It's not that, like, God said what he said. He meant what he said. And it, you and I cannot change it. So let's just, <laughs> we can't change that. We can't. We can't change it. God is good. God is holy. God is compassionate. God washed you clean. So if you feel unworthy, you're out of line. With what he told you, you are. God said that he's going to take care of you. So don't worry. Obviously, I have gone through this as we all do. We're human, right? Is it, it believe him? That's a hard thing to do. Fully believe God in the current state that we're in, even as a pure child of God in my spirit, my soul and my body still they have they have purging to do. The flesh needs to get crucified. The, 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 the soul needs to get uh, purified and renewed. My, my spirit is already righteous. My peace needs to be made complete. My joy needs to be made complete. I have to come to a fuller knowledge of Jesus Christ. I have to be aware of what Satan's about to do or, or going to do. God, you, you know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. That um, It's time to tighten up. We ain't got that much time. But like it says, don't worry about that. Don't worry. It's okay. God knows what he's doing. <laughs> Just stop being greedy with your time, you know, and your other stuff, your money, your, your clothes, your this, your this, your this. Just stop being greedy with it. That's all. God wants, God wants you to walk with him in life. Also, don't separate your ministry with your personal life. God walks with you and does life with you. He walks with you and he does life with you. He walks with you. The day that you got grafted into the family of God by getting the uh, the Holy Spirit, your entire life becomes ministry. Don't separate. Don't say, oh, I'm a full-time minister. We're all full-time ministers in that context. You think God is not there weeping with you at night? He lives inside of you. He indwells you. Like, God pains with you. God hears your cries, your prayers. God sees you. God, God sees you. It's okay. Because when, when you get to heaven, you 
You're never going to want to leave his presence. Ever. The beauty is we won't ever leave his presence. So if these videos bless you, like, subscribe, share. You know the rest. Peace.